I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus and welcome you to this very unusual class. Uh, in, in these studies, uh, we are getting to some nitty-gritty situations that are not too pleasant to talk about, but the world needs to know about. And so we are, in Jesus' name, uh, doing the best that we can to bring them to public uh, view so they can see them. And there are many uh, Americans today who are beginning to believe in reincarnation. So we're going to lecture to you relative to the mystery of reincarnation. And uh, so let us pray. Father, we ask you to direct our thinking, and may we speak the word of truth with great strength and power. Bless these that hear, and we thank you for it. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 9, in verse 27, it says, <clears throat> It is appointed unto men once to die. Now, I would put a little circle around the word once, because if God's word is a lie, the whole Bible is a lie. Uh, the Bible says, it's appointed to man once to die. Uh, men do not die twice. They do not die five times. They do not die ten times. It's appointed unto man once to die. And he says, after that, the judgment. The judgment comes uh, after death. And so, men do not have uh, the transmigration of souls. There is no reincarnation of human beings on the face of this earth. Now, this, this study is important. It's important because it decides human destiny. And that makes it mighty important. A believer uh, in reincarnation uh, will fit his life to the doctrine. <laughs> yeah, he'll live according to the doctrine that, that he believes. Everybody lives according to what they believe, you see. So we must begin. Wh what is reincarnation? Reincarnation is, a, is the philosophy of successive rebirth on this planet. Successive rebirths on the face of this planet. Reincarnation teaches the wheel of eternity, a recurring Birth and death, and birth and death, time and again. Uh, reincarnation teaches that human lives are beginningless and endless. Beginningless and endless. That, that when a child is born, it is not a new personality coming into the universe. It's an old personality coming back. Reincarnation teaches that the human souls of planet Earth successively return to new forms and new bodies. It, it can be an animal body, it can be an insect body, it can be a bird body, it can be a human body. To reach a state called karma is the force which makes each rebirth uh, depend upon its previous deeds in their own lives, reaching into what they believe to be a final state uh, of karma. Where did the doctrine of reincarnation re originate? Uh, this doctrine of reincarnation originated with the devil. Because demons, who were originally angels in heaven, are ageless, they don't get old. They're sexless, they have no sex. And they're deathless, they don't know any death. And they will be placed into the everlasting fires of eternity with the devil at the end of this age. They are rebellious angels. In one generation, a certain one of these uh, spirits uh, will possess a Babylonian. In another generation, that same spirit will possess a sodomite or, a, or a, a person of Sodom. And when these spirits speak through a possessed person, like today, they tell of their reoccurring possessions of human persons as if they are humans coming back. And they're only demons coming back to dwell in certain people that will permit them to come in telling a story that is a lie. So you or me listening to them would think that the man or the woman themselves not knowing that it is an evil spirit talking through them. There's your secret of reincarnation. This begins with the deception. The, the spirit, for example, can say, I lived in a French doctor in the 17th century whose name was Jackies. Uh, uh, we, we know this story personally. It's the reason we gave it. It says, I committed a murder, and, and, uh, and I was never found out, and I feel condemned. And now through you, I am making a penance for what I did, <laughs> making you do certain things. And it's a spirit that's speaking. The possessed person of this generation would say, oh, that's when I lived before. No, you didn't live before. That's the evil spirit that's talking through you saying that he lived at that time. Well, he did. And he's lying and deceiving you to think that you were part of it. You were not. They are no other person have known life before, never one, it don't matter who he is, but the deceiving spirit in them that possessed another entity at that time is now residing in them, and they're believing that entity to have been themselves in a, pre in a previous life. Now, I've met spiritists in Brazil, 
who had spirits in them that had lived in Napoleon, had a, had, had a spirit that says, I am Napoleon, living within them. I am Napoleon the Great. And they would describe the actions and the, and, and the desires and the voice tonation of Napoleon. And that demon-possessed Brazilian would surmise that he was the reincarnation of Napoleon himself. <laughs> and was not at all, you see, not at all. Uh, he, he, he was a deceived person. And when he came to the Lord Jesus Christ and was saved, he knew he had been deceived and that he was not Napoleon at all. In several countries of the world, uh, we have met demon-possessed people who have said that they were the re-embodiment of those who have lived in other generations. We've met many of these types of people. Therefore, it is clear that the doctrine of reincarnation began with the devil, has its field of operations, mostly in pagan countries with pagan people, uh, who are ignorant, who are, who, are not, uh, who are not ignorant of his devices and don't know what the devil is doing, and so they believe it. In our country, uh, we, we should never be deceived. We are people of enlightenment, we have science, and, and we, we, we have God, we have the Bible, and we should know the truth, and the truth should set us free. What is the transmigration of souls? You hear that word used quite a bit. Transmigration is another word for reincarnation. It means the movement of life from one time period to another, to a, another life species, from one to another. The transmigration or the movement of the soul. For example, in India, the word avatar, which means the incarnation of any god into a living human person. In its highest religious evaluation, avatar is the incarnation of Vishnu, who is a very prominent Hindu god. Uh, the, some teachers of the Hinduism believe that Vishnu had been reincarnated numerous times. You see, the, the chief god had been here on their living many times. Uh, other Hindus teach that Vishnu has come as avatar at least nine times. He came one time as a fish, they say. He came one time as a tortoise, they say. He came one time as a man lion, they say. He came one time as a boar, they say. He came one time as a, ch as a child dwarfed. And he came as Rama, he came as Krishna, he came as Buddha, he came as Christ. They want you to believe that Jesus Christ was a reincarnation of one time a fish, a tortoise, a boar, and a lion, and, 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 a, and a child dwarf. And now, when you get into... Uh, and to an understanding of what they're talking about, you can see how foolish it can be. One can easily determine that this is a form of demon possession and that it is a lying spirit and not the person living from other generations at all. And if you can't understand that, it would, it would well, then you are an open door to be possessed by the devil and deceived by the devil and go in hell forever and ever because you believed the lie and were damned. And that's what the Bible says about it. Reincarnation uh, teaches this. That the soul in eternity, that he's, he's in dis, disembodied now, he's back over there on that side, who wins an assignment to a certain person, that he hovers near the parents for some time to make sure that he is willing to proceed with the return to that physical body. I happen to take this out of the National Enquirer. Now, now, now who's going to believe junk like that? That uh, a spirit over on the other side receives an assignment that he is to possess a certain thing that's not born yet, and he hovers around for a few days to see if he wants his assignment. And when the time is right and the physical blossoming occurs, that means a child comes out of the womb, he enters that newborn body, usually at the time of ejection, just as it comes out of the, the woman, but occasionally shortly before it comes out of the woman. If he hesitates too long, the baby will not live. Imagine believing lies like that. That, that, that the life of that baby depends on, the, on, on this demon coming inside and calling itself that I have lived at another time and I have been another person and now I'm going to be you. In the case of a stillborn baby, uh, the body w w was not perfected and thus a soul could not enter into it, they teach. Uh, he would then have to start seeking plans for a proper vehicle. And that's what a human becomes. Or wait his turn uh, for those particular parents if, if he was intent on living with them. Imagine saying that a, de a devil can choose who he wants to live in. You see, what a lie. What a tremendous lie. Surprisingly, for deformed bodies, there are almost as many candidates. Now, this is the, the, the reincarnation teachers. I'm quoting from them. That there are as many uh, candidates for deformed uh, children as there are candidates for bodies uh, that are healthy. He says normal ones. For this is an important lesson which is learned. The greater the obstacles in the physical body, the more opportunity for the soul to pay off some past debts. 
that you're living, paying off past debts uh, of other lives and achieve more rapid spiritual growth. That was from the National Enquirer. You know, neighbors, uh, when we don't believe the truth, the devil gets his lives going. Now, now remember, we all began at Adam and we all began again at Noah. And, and, and so it was after Noah's day that all these lies began to be perpetrated upon the human race. And many people in America today are beginning to believe in reincarnation. And look what they're believing in. Who were the first humans to believe in reincarnation? Uh, the doctrine of metapsychosis uh, means to put a soul into life. And the supposed passing of the soul at death uh, into another body, either human or animal, that uh, means transmigration. It means the movement of one to the other. The transmigration of human souls began in pagan lands. Never, never, never in lands where they knew God. Never. Uh, they first gave themselves to demon power and refused to follow God. The, the Bible says that, they, that all the pagan nations, that they worship devils and not gods. That those things that they worship are not gods, they are devils. Now the Bible says that, and we must accept the word of God. So God wishes to speak to us through his word, giving us the truth of this. Let's look, for example, uh, in Romans uh, 1, 18. It says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness, unrighteousness, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You see? And they one time knew the truth, and they don't live by it. They don't walk by it. it and verse 19 says, Because that when they may be known of God, it's manifest in them. For God has showed it in them. Every people on the face of this earth, in their deepest beings, they know what's right and what's wrong. They do. They do know. They do know. They lie to themselves and they accept a lie. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You, you better read Romans chapter 1 and beginning in verse 18. And I just read to you verse 19. Verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. God says the pagans and the people that believe in, in demon doctrines that they are without excuse. He, he says they are inexcusable. He doesn't accept the excuses. And they will all be judged at the great white throne judgment. And verse 23 says, And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. Isn't that something? Made like unto a corruptible man and to birds. You know, made God like a bird. And made God like a four-footed beast. And made God like a creeping thing. Isn't that amazing? And verse 25 says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie. That, that's what the transmigration of souls means. That's what reincarnation is. It changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. It was countries like India and like Tibet uh, that were the leaders in, in teaching the mystery of, of reincarnation. Uh, Hinduism teaches uh, various levels of consciousness. Higher consciousness is the road to nirvana. A unity consciousness seeks to bring a, a mystical union between you and the universe. A God consciousness is, is when a Hindu considers himself actually God. Many of them do. Such states of consciousness are experienced through hypnosis, uh, mediumistic trances, uh, certain drugs, and through witchcraft. Now, who teaches the doctrine of reincarnation? The, the doctrine of reincarnation is taught by the gurus, they, 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 which literally means a teacher, uh, of the Hindus, uh, and the Hindus cannot be, uh, cannot be, be learning, uh, cannot learn by reading, but they must be taught by a guru who has been taught by a guru. They do not permit you to sit down and read a book and learn. They said, no, you must be, you, you, you won't get it. You've got to be led by a guru, by a teacher. Every Hindu must follow a guru to reach self-realization. He'll never have self-realization until a guru pours it down him. Now, that, that's, that's their teaching. It is through these gurus that tradition is passed from generation to generation. The guru is worshipped through his life and after his death. Many Hindus believe that you can communicate with a guru more strongly after his death than you even did before he died. A guru, a grave of a guru is considered an ideal place to sit and to meditate around his grave, that there you can contact his spirit. You say, Brother Samra, what specifically do people that teach reincarnation, what do they believe? Reincarnation says that the unattached soul seeking reality into a physical body today can have a preference of who they want to enter. Uh, now, isn't that a lie to cook up? That they can say, hey, eeny, meeny, mighty, mo, I'll take mo over here. And uh, 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 that's something to, for human beings with an intelligent brain, and many of them have a fine brain, uh, to believe such a thing. 
uh, he must clear it with a high authority. Now, who the high authority is over there in the spirit world, nobody knows. Unless it's another one of their demons, you know, that they have to clear it with, and so they lift them up to another one. Reincarnation is a doctrine of works and a self-effort. You spend your whole life and, and that self-effort and, and a life of works has nothing to do with God, has nothing to do with the mercy of God, has nothing to do uh, with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ saving us, has nothing to do with God saving you, it's you saving yourself. Reincarnation reaches the achievements of the final state of heaven without the need of a God, without calling upon a God. Reincarnation denies the birth, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It denies an atonement for sin. It has nothing to do with that which the Bible teaches as the way of salvation, the way of life, the way of God's power. The Bible says that man is a sinner. The Bible says man is lost and away from God. That man can only be saved by the power and the force of the Lord Jesus Christ. That without him you cannot be saved. That uh, there is an, only one name given among men whereby we must be saved and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That man must face a judgment one day and none of these are taught by those who teach reincarnation. What is the Bible relationship to such a doctrine? God says that man is appointed unto, uh, unto, unto death one time to die. And after that, he will have the judgment. Now, 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 Jesus taught this. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus said, a certain rich man. Now, if Jesus says a certain one, then you have to believe what Jesus said, that it was a certain rich one, that a certain rich man that he died, that he lifted up his eyes in hell. Well, then he was not over there where the reincarnation people say he was, looking for somebody else to get into. Are you with me? You've got to believe the Bible or not believe the Bible, one or the other, and you'll just have to decide it. The rich man, he was in hell, and Jesus uh, told him he would never get out, never, never get out. He wanted to go back and talk to his brothers, and there, there was no hope of him ever getting out. In hell, he had a memory. He was alert. He knew all about his family that was still living. He knew all about all the things of life and the good times he had had. He had a good memory. His senses of feeling were strong. He said, oh, that a drop of water would be put on my tongue. It is so hot in this place. So he was in a place that he didn't enjoy being in. He, he knew that his brothers were living and rebellious against God and would come where he was if somebody didn't help them. He already knew they were lost. Now, that, that is an amazing revelation. And yet, Jesus said it, so it, it has to be true. And God said, he said, now, if they are not willing to listen to Moses and the prophets of God and the, speaking the word of God, then they wouldn't listen if a man rose from the dead because it's a spiritual matter and not one that has to do with the mind. It is spiritual rebellion against God. And, and so God said, you are there forever. Now, that, that's what God teaches about the passing of a human being off this planet. How does one get into the doctrine of reincarnation? Uh, Oriental meditation is one way, such as TM, Zen, uh, seeking to project a person from rational thought into a higher state of consciousness is one of the best ways to believe in reincarnation. When you get one step in it, you'll go all the way. The devil will pull you into it. These could be the paths of nothingness, the surrender to cosmic forces that you don't understand. It's the playing with yoga, which is literally yoking our union with Brahman. That's what yoga means. Uh, the ultimate goal is union with the absolute, whatever that is, and it isn't God the Father. And yoga teaches breath control, discipline oneself to denounce all desires, which is not human nor divine. And the Bible says that we should uh, desire spiritual gifts. It doesn't say anything about any desires. It says denounce all desires. Yoga says to induce a state of trance or to re be removed from reality. God does not want you ever removed from reality as long as you're on the face of this earth. You should be in reality and know what you're doing because you will be responsible before God for it. Yogi is one of those who has attained from a proficiency in yoga. That's what a yogi is. He should be uh, a master of yoga in order to be uh, such a person. Now, when we understand this, uh, then we should say, now, wait a minute. This uh, reincarnation, it did not come from God. It, it, it uh, did not come from the Bible. It is not part of the Bible. And therefore, I must not have anything to do with it. It did not come even to my country <laughs> through the Pilgrim Fathers. It did not come to my co country through those that have made great civilizations. And this is the finest civilization the world has ever known. It came to us from defeated people, uh, from hurt people, uh, from possessed people, and from people that can't help themselves. They need other people to even to feed them. And so the whole thing is, is a miserable mess. Now, if you don't know that, uh, then, well, you, you learn it the hard way. The true yogi cuts himself off from all sense of perceptions, including his own family, 
When a person gets to be a yogi and has become the top a guru, that person cuts him off from his own family. He cuts himself off from his friends. He cuts himself off from human relationships. He lives beyond space and time. Now, if that's what you want, you'll get it, but it won't take you to heaven. It won't take you to the right place. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment. Where are you living and what are you doing? <laughs> uh, what is your relationship with God? Are you going to believe Oriental philosophy that has not blessed the people that believed it first and have no, they have no conception of where it came from? We do. We read it to you in the book of Romans where it all came from. When men denied that God was the one that should guide them and they gave themselves over to pernicious lies, then that's where all the heathen religions and doctrines came from. And now they're infiltrating a society. They're infiltrating a society that should be Christian, but they're not Christian. They just live in a land where the Bible is taught, but they have it, they're in rebellion against God on the inside morally and spiritually, and then they become open doors to be deceived by the devil. Neighbors, don't be one of them in Jesus' name. So, when we look at reincarnation, these are the facts that are sure to us. Number one, we're sure that reincarnation is a deceiving false hope. It is a deceiving false hope. You will not be reborn upon this earth. And you in your present state have never been here before. That is a lying spirit speaking through you. And that lying spirit may have been here before. It was not in your aunt or your uncle. That part of it is a lie. But in succeeding generations, they have managed to be into different kinds of people. And therefore, uh, it is a false lying spirit that comes to deceive you and to destroy your happiness in this world. <laughs> I've never met a pagan or a heathen who was really happy. No. But you, you talk to them a little while and you, you find they have, they come to the end of nothing. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what life's going to be like. And there's uncertainty there. And there's fear there. And you don't find them happy. God's people are the happy people. God's people know where they're going. They know they're going to spend eternity with God. And they are a people that have a knowledge of the true God. And they love Him. And He is part of them. And they're willing. They're willing to walk in the ways of God. So make a decision. But don't make it just for yourself. Uh, God is looking right now for a mighty movement in this country of deliverers. Now, a person that re believes in reincarnation, you, you would have to set them free. They're possessed. You, they, you couldn't accept that doctrine without being possessed. And you'd need, a, you'd, you'd need a deliverance. You'd need a God's power to come and to set you free from an er erroneous doctrine that you'd receive. And so reincarnation, but beyond any controversy, is a deceiving false hope. Number two, it is a debasing, it is a debasing thing uh, related to human dignity. <laughs> It just makes you something you are not. It, 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 imagine saying, uh, my, 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 in my former life, I was a crawdad. And in, in my former life, I was a giraffe. And in my former life, I was a tortoise. How degrading. You, you were made in the image of God, the Bible says. You were never anything but the image of God. Oh, that we could believe the truth and that the truth would set us free. Neighbors, we must cling to the truth. And don't believe the lies of the devil in Jesus' name. So they're clinging to a false hope. <laughs> they're headed into oblivion without any hope of any kind. And we've got to tell them that. It debases the human dignity. Uh, the, the human is not great. The human is not sublime. The man is the apex of God's creation. The man is the only creature in the whole universe that God permits to share with him the creating of immortality. When a man and a woman come together and they create a child, that child is immortal. It lives forever. No creature in the whole universe, except in God himself, has that ability. Oh, what a relationship. And the devil wants it to go down into the drain and make you into an animal or a spider or, or, or an insect of some kind. It, it seems to me that intelligent people wouldn't go for it. But after seeing thousands of people that belong to it, then I, I can understand once you're deceived by the devil, he can bring in all kinds of stuff into your life uh, that's truly a lie, and you accept it and believe it for the simple reason that you have forsaken the truth. You haven't followed the truth. And number three, three not only does, is it a false hope, and not, no, no, not only is it a debasing of human dignity, but it is a fatal lie to destroy your eternity. It is a fatal lie. I mean, it's the ultimate. It's the end. <laughs> you believe that, and there is no beginning, and there is no hope. It's all of it, you see. 
And to believe in the reincarnation of the human being means that you, you, you believe that in the next life you might be a donkey, in the next life you might be an ape, and in, in the next life you might be, you might be a bird, and, and, and someday you'll be something else. Neighbors, God says, and I accept it, it is appointed unto a man once to die, and after that the judgment. Now God has said it, He has said it all, and you must either accept it or reject it. But I want to tell you something. You may think, I would never believe such a thing. If you don't follow God, you don't know what you'll believe. The devil can present that stuff to you so beautifully and, and, and so remarkably, you say, oh, that seems right to me. <laughs> because you've already been deceived by the devil. When you receive light, you walk in darkness, and Christ is light. And when you receive his power, you, you, you become attached, uh, related to the devil's power. I urge you in Jesus' name, I urge you in Jesus' name not to go after any of these doctrines that came from hell and came from the devil, and they're headed back the same place they came from, and they're not for you to believe. Please don't believe them. Please don't accept them in Jesus' name. And we as a class... God help us to go out and set many free from their, from their evil doctrine. You said, how in the world can I do it? You, you can say, do you want to be free? You have believed a lie. I'll cast it out of you. Lay your hand upon them and command it to come out, and they will be free. And they will be free in Jesus' name.